Welcome to Fired Up. I'm your host for the show, Bob Irwin, coming to you from the studios of the American Guns and Glory Network here in Las Vegas, Nevada. The, this show is about guns, related political issues, and self-defense issues. Fired Up is on our website, firedupwithbobirwin.com. A new show is posted every Thursday around 5 p.m. Pacific time. The show appears also on numerous other media. Uh, every day or so, I get an email from somebody who saw us on some station I never heard of, but it's rebroadcast by lots of people. Uh, the audio feed for radio listeners is rebroadcast Saturdays at noon on the Nevada Talk Network. You can check them out at KELY1230A.com, KELY1230.com, for a station in your area, which is 15 or 16 stations now in Nevada, none of which are in Clark County at the moment, but they're working on it. Or maybe there is by now, but I don't know about it yet. Uh, anyway, questions and comments. Uh, you can send an email to bob at firedupmail.com. Uh, that'll appear on the runner just below me on the air here. and Or leave a message in my home office recorder, which is 702-257-1060. Okay. The, um, if you do leave contact information, we will respond by email, text, or telephone. Questions directed to our guests will be forwarded, so they will get them from me and with your contact information. There are several hundred defensive uses of firearms every week in the United States, rarely covered by any mainstream media. So we always print, present a few of those for our listeners' education. Uh, this, some are good shootings, some are questionable, sometimes they're just plain wrong, but they all have educational value for people who own a firearm, who carry one concealed. Um, Fired Up is a nationwide show. Individual incidents are generally adjudicated under local law. The results might not apply to listeners in different jurisdictions. Advice given here is intended to keep you safe, out of jail, and prevent losing your house in a lawsuit, which inevitably follows most shootings. Today's guest is Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department Detective Sergeant Michael Bunker. Uh, Mike, a bit of your background, please, for anybody who doesn't know you. I was a Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department officer for approximately 40 years. I've worked uniform patrol, communications, narcotics, general assignment detective, and organized crime bureau or intelligence for the last 20 years, organized crime. That's interesting. You going to write a book? No. Uh, I ask him that at least once a month for the last 20 years, and he always declines. Uh, we are um, looking at uh, the issue of officers versus civilian shootings. Um, they're different, as, as I've explained often on this show. Um, there was an incident here uh, involving uh, metros, as, as they say in, on their uh, website, the, the, the 20th officers involved shooting this year, 20 so far this year. 10 of those police shootings were fatal. Um, the other local jurisdictions, Henderson, North Las Vegas, Boulder City, and Nye County have experienced similar instances. Um, this, this is basically the story of what happened. Metropolitan Police Department Captain Jamie Prosser said that uh, at a late morning news conference uh, given to uh, Max Mitchell of the Review Journal, uh, it was also covered by KVVU TV5 and most other local media carried this story. Um, basically what happened here is a DUI subject was shot and killed Wednesday morning. This is Thursday. This is yesterday's. Uh, happened yesterday. Uh, after firing at least one gun shot at Las Vegas officers responding to a crash in the Southwest Valley. Uh, this is, well, it's, it's complicated, but here we go. The exchange of gunfire occurred after the man crashed just after 7 a.m. near South Rainbow Boulevard and Gary Avenue. That's near the turnoff for Blue Diamond Road on the south edge of town here. Um, during the investigation into the crash, the man refused to take a field sobriety test. 
Instead, Captain Prosser said, he ran from the officers to a nearby desert area, picked up a gun, and fired at least one shot toward the police. Uh, two officers fired back, hitting the suspect, who died later at the, later at the scene. Um, the Clark County Coroner's Office vehicle arrived at the scene at 10.30 a.m. Another person was hospitalized with injuries unrelated to the crash, but LVMPD spokesman did not say what caused that person's injuries, but there was a second party there who was hurt some way or another. I say this just happened, so we don't have all the details. As is normal policy, uh, Metro will, not, will withhold the names of the officers involved for, in the incident for 72 hours, which is a good idea. Uh, construction workers could be seen standing on scaffolding at an unfinished building near the scene, actually just across the street almost, watching the detectives as they worked the scene. S scene. Some witnesses would later tell detectives that the man hid an object in the brush near the roadway before the officers arrived at the site of the crash. The suspect will be identified uh, by the coroner's office once his family has been notified. Uh, this, this is really unusual. The DUI suspect apparently had dumped the, the presumed legal firearm in nearby shrubbery before the officers arrived at the crash scene. Um, imagine their surprise <laughs> when their possibly injured motorist dived into the brush, came up with a gun, and shot at them. The, um, obviously, this is something you're really not prepared for. Um, we're going to uh, take a short commercial break, let you digest all of that, and then we'll discuss this a little bit. We'll be right back. Don't go away. My name is Jerry Creed and I'm a gun trust attorney. If you want to own an NFA firearm, a gun trust is a great way to own it because it allows multiple people to lawfully possess a firearm instead of just a single individual. I have reviewed lots of gun trusts and I have found they often don't include the forms you need to bring people on as trustees and remove them as trustees. In addition, a gun trust will save you the cost of probate and avoid probate, and it can protect your executor and family members. You know, there isn't an element of intent in these laws that affect the NFA firearm possession. So it doesn't matter if your wife didn't intend to sell the gun at a uh, garage sale or yard sale, or your daughter didn't intend to drive the car with the silencer in the trunk. A gun trust is a great way to protect your family members and friends and share in the fun and pleasure of owning NFA weapons. If you want a gun trust done right, remember to trust Jerry. We are back. Um, Mike, uh, first thing I want to discuss is are we in the midst of more officers being attacked, more officers involved shooting where the police were attacked. It's, it certainly seems so looking at the media coverage. Just looking at the numbers, you've got to say that, yes, the incidence of officer-involved shootings has increased. But you also have to take into account when you start looking at statistics for the city of Las Vegas, the Clark County, uh, we've grown from... 1970, 600,000 people to 2.2 million people plus hmm. between two and 400,000 visitors at any one time that are residing in Las Vegas and an untold number of people who are stopping, you know, on their way through maybe for gas or oil or whatever else reason uh, they're stopping. So, yes, I think uh, the number of officer involved shootings have increased as has the news media coverage of all law enforcement events. That, that would certainly seem to be one of the issues that um, we now have shootings in the media that we would have never heard of 20, 30 years ago uh, that 
an officer got shot in Nome, Alaska, or an officer was injured or shot a suspect in Maine, um, it wouldn't be carried by the media because the media then was a couple of national news stations that were just in the beginning and newspapers. If you didn't subscribe to a newspaper in Bloomington, Illinois, you wouldn't hear about a shooting in yeah, Bloomington, Illinois. Now, now you have 24-hour news media coverage, if you consider commentaries along with it, 24-7. Uh, and if you look at your media guide, what, 15 to 20 percent? Do you know what kind of an animal that is to have to feed with newsworthy items? Uh, hence, we get some ridiculous stories and some things that are covered that aren't really worth that much coverage. Yeah, I, but the news media has has to fill that void. They have to fill the dead air with something, and that's why you see so many human interest stories. And I was watching the news this afternoon, and they covered a local station, and they covered uh, who's filling in for this person at the next concert, and which star is likely to appear, and then they interviewed some guy who does a, a, an act where he pretends to be a, a previous, another singer. And it's, it was all human interest stories, and there was not much there to, uh, to talk about what we would have called news. Um, I, I try to look up a lot of data on officer-involved shootings, and discovered that it, it's a, there is very little data there that's really uh, reliable. Um, some keep incredibly detailed records, New York City PD being the top of that list. They can tell you every shooting they've had in the last 20 years, what the humidity was, uh, whether there was a car wreck within three blocks. You know, they, they track everything. But Others keep no data at all, or uh, they just save it on, uh, they don't save it because the case is adjudicated and it's done in court, so who cares? Or they cleared the incident. They, they know the guy who was involved in the shooting is in prison dead or something. Or in, and uh, so they don't, who are they going to report it to? They're, there's nobody that collects the data. There's no national requirement for anybody, any police department, to report data on shootings. Some of them report them to the state where they have a duty to do that in their state. Others have no duty in that state, so they don't, it's, it's not recorded at all. So all this stuff is in an old filing cabinet somewhere. Um, now, Fired Up generally deals, as we know, with civilian incidents, private citizens shooting guns. It is not, not really my intention to get involved in talking about police shootings on a regular basis. This one was just so unusual that the suspect did something this weird uh, in, uh, in this particular to say the least. Particular thing. I was, I was going to ask you directly if you ever had this happen where a suspect dove into the bushes and came up with a gun. Um, I pretty well know the answer. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's it's something that you would only see in some crime novel. It's not something that that just happens in real life. Perhaps a gun sitting in front of some guy uh, while he's in his easy chair, while he goes for his gun at his belt or in his pocket, something like that. That's not terribly unusual. But hiding a gun in the desert. Running out, retrieving it, and then trying to use it against the police, that is one in many million. Yeah, there's always, every week or so when I start going through cases, I always find something that is so bizarre. Um, it's never happened before, in, to my knowledge. Most of them don't make good stories for television <laughs> or the, for the YouTube show. But the um, anyway, where I wanted to go here is if, what we normally cover is civilian uh, use of force. And to remind shooters that uh, the rules for defensive shooting by law enforcement and by civilians are entirely different. Police are required to intervene when 
innocent lives are in danger as opposed to civilians who have no duty to act. As a civilian, you have no duty to do anything. Civilians generally are pointing or firing their gun uh, because it seems prudent, but they are not required to act. Law enforcement officer, a law enforcement officer who fails to act um, because uh, is often charged with a crime. We've seen some some stories on that in, uh, particularly in Florida, with the Parkland shooting and several of those. We had an officer arrive at the building where you could hear shots and he did not enter. Uh, some of those guys were crucified uh, in the media, deservedly so. Uh, some of them fell back on their training to uh, say that, well, we were told to wait until there's three officers there. That was training for a while before uh, Columbine, actually. Before we had the ent already, everybody in law enforcement got the same entry team training. The first three guys are a team, and they enter right there and go for the gunfire and so forth. Um, but that was after the the shooting where we got so many killed in, in uh, Colorado. The anyway, that, all that's changed now. And but you understand that that officers are required to act. Uh, private citizens are really totally in a different world. Uh, it's prudent to run away and call the police. Um, if this was a civilian stopping at an accident scene, he would, my advice would be, if the guy runs off into the desert and comes up with a gun, or the guy just runs off in the desert, you stop right there. You're not, why would you get involved further other than backing away and calling the police? Um, Stopping in an accident seen for anybody, civilian or police officer, is routine. It's something reasonable people do. Uh, retreat is a viable option. Always let the cops handle the situation if that's at all possible. If your children or others are in line of fire, you're certainly going to return fire as appropriate to protect your kids. Uh, shooting to protect your car from bullet holes. Uh, is a production of property issue and we all know with a few exceptions around the country you cannot use deadly force to protect property so if you end up in court and saying well i i was my car was going to was getting bullet holes in it so i shot the guy to prevent my car having bullet holes in it that's a losing lawsuit right there the attorneys will will absolutely eat you alive in court Yes, they will. Uh, states where you have a right to stand your ground, uh, Nevada is one of those where you have a right to stand your ground. Um, you're still allowed to retreat in the face of danger. You're not required to stand your ground. It is not often prudent to do that. I, I say over and over again, let the guys with the body armor Lots of help on the way, and free lawyers get involved with this stuff. Don't engage if it is not to save a human life. Um, this concept of a justifiable homicide is in the law. We all know that. Um, you want to talk about that a little bit, the difference between... Well, uh, let me give you a story of a justifiable homicide and a murder. An individual is... At his house, two big burly guys come up, knock on his door, and finally uh, start kicking it. He comes to the front door. There they stand with firearms in their hand. He's got a firearm in his hand. He shoots one of the intruders. The other one runs away. That's justifiable. He is defending himself. Chasing down the other guy a block and a half away and shooting at him the whole time and finally killing him turns him from a victim into a suspect in murder. Uh, you can't chase the guy down when he is no longer a danger. So there's a, a difficult situation for anybody to be in, but as Bob says... Uh, if you can, 
run away. That's the best way if you are a civilian, avoid or get away from the incident. I, uh, this is really getting tough with all this new electronics, as I've, I've told everybody. I just sent out a, a text to that on our website also. Um, I finally brought a, a time clock so I can keep track, and I didn't turn it on when we actually started the show. So I'm presuming we have about six or seven minutes left. Yes. Um, so let me, um, let me talk a little bit about something else while we're here. I mean, the bottom line for what we said here, hopefully, is you, you go back to the very basics. You can shoot to defend a human life, including your own or other people. <coughs> other people you know is a really good idea. Other people you don't know, you might misread what's happening and shoot the wrong guy. Uh, we've had lots of undercover cops uh, over the years shot and where the civilian jumped into something he was they were in the middle of and there we are. Um, our, our website firedupwithboberwin.com contains recent shows with older shows being added uh, as we get to it. The, the commercials that keep us on the air also pay, please also patronize our sponsors. Capitalism wins every time. We'll be back next Thursday here on our website and on YouTube at the American Guns and Glory Network. Remember, the audio portion is repeated on the Nevada Talk Network all across Nevada, Saturdays at noon. You can check out the stations at KELY1230.com. There's 14 or 15, 16 stations now, AM and FM, that carry that. Uh, next week's guest is California and Nevada attorney Donald J. Green. Uh, we will be talking about some political issues next week because early voting starts shortly after our next show is on. Um, Don and I will also be at the Crossroads of the West Gun Show at the Pavilions downtown at the World Trade Center. Uh, that <coughs> is after that show. It's not this weekend. It's next weekend. <coughs> we ran a... Uh, one of the shows we got bottled up on and ran late, it said, uh, we'll be at, the, at this particular gun show. And that show had already taken place because of the show that we, we got out, didn't go, and so forth and so on. So we misdirected a lot of people. I've sent out a couple of emails to correct that. Hopefully, it, it got there. So we will have Don here next week on Fired Up already confirmed. He won't be trying to get somebody out of jail, so forth, <coughs> I hope. Uh, he's been chasing a client around that has some big legal problems, and uh, it's caught tight up a lot of his time. But we will be at, then at the Crossroads show the following weekend. So hopefully, that's the weekend after next. Hopefully, we'll see you then with all sorts of free advice and lots of... Uh, <coughs> fired up gear that I should have ready for sale by then. Thank you all so much for watching. Mike, thank you for being here again. I thank appreciate you. your coming Anytime. on short notice. And uh, we'll be back next week. Have a good evening.